Alright guys, my name is Omo. At least people call me Omo in Second Life. Real life, my name is Nika. So it's very nice to meet ya. But today I'm going to be showing the workflow of how I get my stuff in the Second Life and produce very high quality content and manage it relatively quickly so that way I can pump in items as much as I want, as fast as I want, and keep a quality and substance that people enjoy that doesn't look cheap, tacky, or just cause you a massive headache and how to color your own maps and such like that. So what we have here is a skull. And this is a high poly skull. Its vertices are 783,056. What we're going to do is we're going to lower this down to a significant number so that way we can actually play it in video games. It renders properly for people. It doesn't cause lag. And it keeps all the detail that we want inside this high poly one into a very low feature poly one. About around maybe two, three thousand poly, um, three thousand vertices. So, to start, what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate our high poly one, and once this is duplicated, we're going to go over to geometry. Inside of geometry, there is a panel called Z Remesher. You go to this, and you want to lower the target down to, for this, I'm going to lower it down to maybe seven, like, seven target polygons. Now what this is doing, it's lowering down your polygons and turning them into squares. It's trying to mimic what it's taking from the high polygons and making it lower. It's it's kind of obvious what it's kind of doing, you know. But yeah, now we just have to wait. The good old ZBrush gods is giving us a good mapping right now. And that should be yeah, it. There we go. Alright, so... This is our high poly. Notice how there's thousands of these little guys here. Thousands of squares. Here's our low poly. Notice a significant difference in the number. It looks nice, but we're still a little high for games. We don't want to import something that's 23,000 vertices. It's a big mistake. If you do that, people are going to be very mad at you. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Z plugin, and we're going to go to UV master. With this kind of vertices, around 2,000, maybe 30,000, it allows the program to create a UV map without crashing or getting too laggy and making it. So what we're going to do is keep symmetry on and unwrap. And let ZBrush do its magic yet again. We don't have to really do anything. At this point, you can go and get a drink, get yourself a nice cold beer, chug it. I, I don't know. I'm trying to be funny, but I'm not really coming off as that much. All right, but the map is created. And once we have the map done, we want to go to uh, uh, we want to go to something called Decimation Master. Click on this guy, and for you guys, it's not going to have Keep UVs on, so you want to click it on. After we do this, go to Preprocess and click this button. Make sure the whole entire thing processes in the left left hand corner. And what I'm going to do is make the key points to 2K points and decimate. Notice how we have a lot of triangles now. Doesn't look as flashy as the squares, but it keeps the general shape that we want of the whole entire poly uh, of the mesh itself. After this, we're going to go and divide it. I'm going to divide it to maybe... Nah, 193,000 is good. We're going to show the higher poly mesh. And after we show this, make sure you're selected on the lower poly mesh before you do this. Once we have this all clicked on, press Project All. Sometimes you get an option that says, would you like to take the poly paint and put it onto your lower mesh? Normally I click yes, so that way it grabs all the poly paint and puts it right on the stuff, but seeing as this is still black and white and I haven't colored it yet, we're not going to have that option. Now, notice the significant difference as to how it actually masked and manipulated the lower one to looking just as good as the higher one. Pretty good, huh? Not too bad. So once we have this all down, I can actually go to my lower one, and we're going to export this lower one into Blender. I made a previous tutorial, but sadly I had to delete it and make this one again. So I'm just going to click on Scully as my lower. Yes. And go over to your higher one, and we're going to export this guy too. I don't need to export him, but export as high. And there we go. Now we go over to Blender. In here it's relatively simple. Go to OBJ. 
and we're going to go to our desktop and we're going to find our lower polygon only, not the higher one. We're going to click on it and it's going to import. Notice how it's not smooth at all, it looks kind of jagged and kind of meh. We're going to click on them and we're going to smooth shading. Once this is done, go to file, export, export them as an OBJ, selection only, and find your scully again and copyright over to on top of it. Once we do this, I go into a new program. It's called Tapu Gun. Not many of you are going to have it. It's not bad. You don't need it. Especially if you have ZBrush, but I tend to like it because I like a different kind of method of how I actually make my stuff look for my items. Now what we're going to do from this area is we're going to go to Load Ref and we're going to find our high poly mesh that we had earlier. So Scully High. <sighs> so once we import this guy we can now go over to the desktop again, or wherever you saved it, click down here to get the OBJ option, and go to Scully, your lower render one. Make sure you have a UV map and make sure you've smoothed out the shading when, before importing a cage into Tapu Gun, or else the whole entire program just crashes. It's very fragile, I don't know why it is, but sometimes it just likes to give you a little kick in the pants and make you very pissed off in a certain day. From here, I'm going to go over to Baking, and we're going to generate maps. Now, notice the blackness around my model. That's the cage and how it's trying to grab whatever it can to pretty much bake and give us the nice AO maps that we want and all that good stuff. And I'm going to go to Cage Distance and increase it to a certain number, so that way it looks relatively okay. Now, here you can actually bake your normal maps, your displacement maps, your AO map, your color map is down here. What we're going to do right now is we're just going to make an AO map. So I'm going to go over to click on generate, turn my quality to about 70. Skylight, I like to make around 90 so that everything's clear. We're going to set a place for that. I'm just going to call this, where is my Kabold armor? There you are, Kabold ancient armor, Scully. From there on, I can just click on Generate, and what it's making is my own very awesome AO map that I don't have to worry about anything. This does all the shading for me, it makes it look awesome, it takes everything that's high detailed from the higher poly one and puts it onto the lower one. And from there, we can actually go into Photoshop once it's done grabbing everything we want. Yeah! So perfect and great. Alright, so loading up Photoshop. I like that picture. I hope that stays for a while. <sighs> okay. From here, I'm going to go and find our picture again. And here's our AO map from Scully. Notice how it took everything we wanted. It looks bony. It looks pretty, looks pretty bitchin'. Now, you can obviously change the UV maps and such and clean it up inside ZBrush itself, but for this tutorial, we're not going to really emphasize and go into that. But as you can see, it worked properly. It did what we wanted. From here, we can actually click on him now. Go to Export. Regular data. Apply modifier selection. Include armatures. Export SL Open Sim. It's a very needed one. And Scully Head Mask. Now I can go into Second Life. Well, I'm just a lizard. Hey buddy, don't give me that. Making a good tutorial, don't give me errors today. Okay, so now that we have it, we can actually go over here, I can equip it. Make sure it loads. Oh my god, it's you guys who asked for the tutorials! Look at you, all oh, beautiful and crazies. Talking all nutty over there. Now, it takes a second for Second Life to obviously initiate and make the mesh for itself and all the good stuff. So, while it's doing that, I'm just going to go over here to Add, go to Local, and I'm going to find the texture that I had prior when I made the AO map for it. So, Kabold, Ancient Armor, there you are. Scully, grab it, 
rotate it, twist it. Boom! You now have yourself an awesome, awesome bitch and mesh. Really quickly, you did what you need to do in ZBrush, you got it out, boom. It looks perfectly well. How many prims does it actually cost now? Look, look at that. Look at that beautiful number there. A six. It is six prims. With plenty of detail, no laggies, none of that crazy bull from other creators who try to make their stuff super high rendering looking stuff to make quality and detail when in reality, you don't need that much. All you really need are normal maps, shininess maps, and your regular texture map of AO maps. Boom. Hopefully this tutorial helped you out a little bit. If not, I am totally sorry. I'm not a tutorial maker, but this is my workflow. If you, had any, if you have any other questions and such, please contact me. My name is Omo, or Omocha, LaRue. So yeah, hope this helped a little bit. Alright.